Hello Game Makers, this is Game Maker Rob and in today's episode we start with a basic grid uh, where we can move a camera around and move a cursor around as well. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to jump into some code for this episode to get a few things up and running. If we go into the controller object, uh, we have a couple of regions. We're going to go into this first region here called Setup Enums. And this first enum is going to let our game know what biome we are using. And that's basically what tile set we're going to use. We just added the sprites for this one here, farm outside, which is these four sprites. And these four sprites tie in with the our second enumerator, which is e-tile parts. So we want to know for every cell in our map uh, what image index to use for the ground, which image index to use for the west wall, which one for the north wall, and which one for the decoration. So um, I'll explain a bit more about this later on when we do some code, but just understand that uh, this enumerator relates to these different sprites and which image index to use. And we don't have to worry about the barn and city biomes for now because we have only imported the sprites for farm outside. So we're just going to worry about that one for now. So for this next region, we're going to basically just store the sprites that are relevant for the particular biome we're using, which is this one, and uh, what piece of data we want to use. So for example, if we're drawing the west wall and our biome is farm outside, then uh, we're going to check the image index based on this sprite, T farm wall west. So, um, and the good, the reason to set up things like this is when we're drawing our maps, the same code will work regardless of the tile part and regardless of the biome. So it saves us a lot of work in the end. And then the last thing we're going to do is go to the room map editor. So now if we go into our second object, OBJ map editor, into the create event, we have a couple of things to add. So the first thing we need to do is get the width and height of our isometric tiles. That was why we imported the T underscore grass sprite. If you remember, it's going to be a diamond shape and it's going to give us our tile width and tile height. The second thing we need to do is create a grid. I'm just going to have mine set to 10 by 10. Um, this is because in XCOM, the different uh, parts of the battlescape were all 10 by 10 maps and they were just kind of stitched together. Um, we are going to have the ability to have different sized maps though. So don't worry about, you know, if you want to have a bigger or, or a smaller map right now, just do what I'm doing and you can, you can make the changes later on when we do that. And the third thing is to set every cell inside our grid to one which we're going to use just to draw basically um, a 10 by 10 grid of grass. And the reason it's one is because if we go to our uh, T farm floor sprite, this is zero, this is one. So this is going to give us our grass sprite. And just to kind of show yourself how bright we're using. So it could be, if we, if we were on this sprite here, it could be the grass, it could be, dirt, it could be wheat, stuff like that. And then this second enum is uh, which tile part we're going to place. So it's going to be ground, west wall, north wall, or decoration. All right, so we are going to now go into the step event of our map editor object. All we're going to do for this is we we want to have a cursor in our game so we can um, move it around, decide whether to uh, change the uh, wall, floor, that kind of thing. So uh, we need to track it on the grid. 
So that's all we're going to be doing in this region. We're going to get the height and the uh, sorry, we're going to get the width and the height of the grid. Uh, we know right now it's 10 by 10, but um, in the future, the width and height of the grid is going to be dynamic. Uh, it could change at any time uh, when we are in the map editor. So we're just going to do this now rather than have to, to change it later on. So this gets the width and height of the grid. Grid X and grid Y are going to be our X and Y coordinates of the grid, like I said. Um, how do we know where it is? Well, we're going to be looking at an, is an isometric map. So we have to convert the mouse coordinates into 2D coordinates as though we were looking at the map top down, like a, like a 2D top down game. So that's all these two lines are going to do. Get us our coordinates for grid X and grid Y. And the last thing we need to do is uh, we could move our mouse outside of the grid, but we don't want our cursor to follow us because it will look silly and we'll probably get a crash. So we're just going to clamp our grid X and grid Y to H cells and V cells minus one. Before we go into the draw event, uh, I have one more variable to add in the create event, which is current biome. This is going to keep track of which biome we're in at the moment. I'm going to set it to farm outside right now. So then if we go into the draw event, so we have H cells and V cells because again, floor grid is going to be dynamically sized. So we're just going to check this every step, every draw event before we do a double for loop. So we're going to start YY equals zero, which is going to be the top of our grid and x, x equals zero, which is going to be the left of the grid. And then we're going to go from left to right and draw all of our floor cell cells for that row. And then y, y is going to increase by one. And again, we're going to draw all the X cells from left to right for that row. It's not a great way to do it for really big isometric maps. Um, unless you are limiting this double full loop to the view, but, um, it's, it's good enough for our purposes anyway. The next thing we're going to add is we're going to calculate draw X and draw Y. Um, we're drawing an isometric map, not a 2D top-down grid. So um, it's a little bit more complicated to get the coordinates, but this is the calculation for the X and this is the calculation for the Y. Then we, we're going to get our index for each floor cell from floor grid. If you have it the same as me, this is always going to equal one right now. And then we have to grab the sprite that we stored in our global.biomes 2D array. We're going to get the sprite for the ground tile part and the current biome, which is the farm. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the floor. So draw a sprite the sprite that we grabbed from our global 2D array. The image index we want to draw, so one is gonna give us grass, and then we're gonna draw it at our draw X and draw Y coordinates. And last of all, we also want to draw the cursor. So um, we only want to draw the cursor if the double for loop XX and YY is the same value as our grid X and grid Y. So as long as this is true, then we're going to draw our cursor sprite image index of one and draw X and draw Y. So um, we're going to make a change in, change in a minute, but I just want to show you what this looks like. Let's run the game. You can see um, we have our isometric map being drawn in the top left like that. Uh, we can move our cursor around and it matches properly, uh, but um, we want to see the whole thing and the best way to do this really is to introduce a camera so we're going to do that next okay so for the camera let's go into the create event of our map editor and at the bottom we have a new region set camera position and we're going to say cx which stands for camera x equals minus our tile width times 10 
and the same for CY which is camera Y position and tile height minus tile height times 10 and then we're going to use a function called camera set view pause which just changes the, the position of our camera in the room and we're done for the setup and now in the step event we're going to have this code here which if we press W A S or D we're going to move our map around so if we press W then we're going to decrease CY by 8 if we press S then we increase CY by 8 and the same for CX and A and D and then again use the same function camera set view pause so let's run the game again and you can see we can now see the full map we can press WASD move it around and our uh, cursor game cursor sticks to the isometric map you can see though uh, it's kind of very small on our screen uh, that's because I probably put the wrong room dimensions so we're going to go into uh, our two rooms, room main, and we're going to change our viewport in zero. Uh, we're going to change the, the camera property width to 320 and height to 240, like that. And we're going to leave the viewport the same. And then the same for the map editor. We're going to change the camera property from 640 to 320 and 480 to 240 and then we're going to run the game again so now we have a, a better zoomed in screen to work with and i am going to leave it there for this episode thank you so much for watching i'll catch you next time bye for now